In the spine, the vertebras are aligned one on the top of the other. They're held together by strong ligaments in front, in the back, and inside of the spine. It is important that the spine keeps its alignment to protect the spinal cord and the nerves, all the nerves that exit from the spinal cord. Spondylolisthesis is when one vertebra sleeps over the other one. Today, I will answer five questions that people ask me about spondylolisthesis. Is it a surgical emergency? Is spondylolisthesis, spondylosis and spondylolysis the same? How do I know if spondylolisthesis is the cause of my back pain? My doctor told me I don't need surgery, so what should I do to manage the pain? Will spondylolisthesis get worse with time and I will end up needing surgery? So, let's talk about spondylolisthesis today. Question 1. Is spondylolisthesis a surgical emergency? Before I continue, let me remind you that this video is not intended to replace medical advice. It is for educational purposes only. If you need medical advice, contact your doctor. In case of emergency, go to the nearest emergency department or call 911. The decision to undergo surgery is based on a number of different factors. It depends on the patient's age, what caused the spondylolisthesis, how much slippage has occurred, if the patient is having symptoms or not, if the listesis is stable or progressing, and the general condition of the patient. You may be surprised to hear this, but the majority of people who have spondylolisthesis don't even know they have it, as they have no symptoms at all. Spondylolisthesis can be found in children who have some deformities of the spine. The isthmus is the bone that holds the vertebra in place. The isthmus is also called pars interarticularis. This is a tiny and thin bone that connects the back to the front of the vertebra. If there is malformation of the isthmus, it may break, and we call this type of fracture spondylolysis. Then, the front of the vertebra is free to move forward and this may cause spondylolisthesis. This type of spondylolisthesis is called isthmic spondylolisthesis and it's more common in children, adolescents and young adults. In some cases, this spondylolysis or the fracture of the isthmus is caused by a trauma or fracture or in an accident and we call this post-traumatic spondylolisthesis. However, the most common type of spondylolisthesis is not due to a fracture of the isthmus. The type of spondylolisthesis that is most common is in older people older than 50 years of age. The upper vertebra will sleep forward because the other structures that hold the spine in place are getting weak and degenerated. This could be degenerative disc disease, facet joint arthritis, weakened ligaments and muscles, so the vertebras start moving forward with time. This type of spondylolisthesis is called degenerative spondylolisthesis. You may have noticed that we use the term spondylo for various things. We use the term spondylo to refer to the vertebra. And when there is a degeneration of the spine, we call this spondylosis. In spondylosis, the person will have symptoms similar to degenerative dis disease, facet joint arthritis, osteoarthritis of the spine, sciatica, and spinal stenosis. Spondylolisthesis can be classified into five grades. We use the Meyerding grading system, which is based on how much slippage occurs between the upper and the lower vertebra. Less than 25% is grade 1, 26 to 50% is grade 2, 51 to 75% is grade 3, 76 to 100% is grade 4, and more than 100% is grade 5, and we call this spondylopitosis. We can group grades 1 and 2 into low grades, and grades 3, 4, 5 into high grades. 
It is interesting to know that some people with high grades have no symptoms at all, and some people with a grade 1 spondylolisthesis may have a lot of pain. So the decision to operate or not should be discussed with the surgeon based on all of these factors. But rarely it is an urgency. Surgery in this case is only an urgency if there is a risk of nerve compression or a spinal cord injury, but this is very rare with spondylolisthesis. In general, the patient should have enough information and enough time to decide the pros and cons of doing or not doing surgery. And perhaps even time to ask for a second opinion. Any spine surgery carries risk of complications. So it is important that the person gets all information they can and be prepared to ask relevant questions. Question two. Is spondylolisthesis, spondylolysis, spondylosis, and spondylitis the same? Well, no. Spondylo means vertebra. Spondylolisthesis is this slippage of the upper vertebra over the lower vertebra. Spondylolysis is the fracture of the isthmus, the part called pars interarticularis. This may lead to isthmic spondylolisthesis. But there are cases of spondylolysis without spondylolisthesis. Spondylosis is degenerative arthritis of the spine, which may lead to degenerative spondylolisthesis. And spondylitis is inflammation of the vertebra. We see this in ankylosing spondylitis, which is an autoimmune rheumatological disease that affects mainly the lumbosacral spine. And there is another term, spondyloptosis, which is an extreme case of spondylolisthesis, which is the grade 5 or 100% of slippage. Question 3. How do I know if spondylolisthesis is the cause of my lower back pain? As I mentioned before, there are people who have degenerative spondylolisthesis, spondylolysis and spondylosis and do not have any lower back pain. They find out accidentally when they do an X-ray, CT scan or MRI for other reasons like uh, to investigate a kidney stone or a gallbladder problem. When we see a person with low back pain, we need to take a good history of the pain problem and do a complete physical examination including a neurological exam. Then. If we suspect degenerative spondylolisthesis, we can order an X-ray. And if there is a slippage of one vertebra over the other, we look to see if there is a isthmic fracture or spondylolysis. Usually the lower back pain is correlated with the localization of the listhesis. So if we see listhesis between the fifth lumbar vertebra and the first sacral vertebra, we call this L5-S1, we should see symptoms in that area and the nerves that exit at this level are called the L5 nerve root. So only the skin that is innervated by L5 should be affected with numbness and only the muscles and the reflexes that are affected by L5 should be impaired. If we see that the symptoms do not correlate with the spondylolisthesis site and the side right or left, then we say that these are accidental findings and they do not explain the patient's symptoms. Therefore, there is no indication that the, we need to treat that spondylolisthesis. Question four. My doctor told me I don't need surgery, so what should I do to manage the pain? If you want to read the script of this video, there is a link in the description below. So now treating pain is right my area. I am a pain doctor, a specialist in physical medicine rehabilitation or PMNR or physiatry, the short form. So when the surgeon says to treat conservatively, the patient could see a physiatrist. That's a physiatrist like me for a proper treatment plan. In physiatry, we use a multidisciplinary approach to pain management. This means that we work in teams that include physicians, physiotherapists, psychologists, nurses, pharmacists, and many other professionals. 
I usually tell my patients to remember to use their toolbox. I ask how many tools do you have in your toolbox to manage your low back pain? Remember the 5M of conservative therapy plus the IS for interventional and surgical treatments. The 5M conservative treatments include medications, mind-body movement modalities, and manual therapy. So let's talk a little bit about them. Medications. Well, avoid narcotic medications. NSAIDs and acetaminophen are the painkillers of choice. Use uh, prior to activities to improve your tolerance to physical exercise. I have another video. You can watch my video about NSAIDs. If there is neuropathic pain, we tend to use anticonvulsants or antidepressants adjuvants. You may watch my video about gabapentin here. Mind-body therapies include mindfulness, meditation, relaxation, biofeedback, hypnosis, stress reduction, and I have a video that summarizes many mind-body therapies that are effective for chronic pain, including low back pain. What about movement? Core strengthening exercises are very important. Aerobic conditioning, low-impact exercises are the best for spondylolisthesis. I usually recommend a stationary bike, swimming, hydrogenastics, or dance. Have you seen my video of dance for arthritis? Well, you should see, I have some videos that are relevant for people with degenerative spondylolisthesis. If your pain is aggravated when you bend forward, then maybe watch my video of exercises for degenerative disc disease. If your pain is aggravated when you bend backwards, maybe it's a facet problem and I have a video for that. It's called the exercises for facet joint arthritis. If your pain is mainly radiating to one leg only, then maybe these are symptoms of sciatica, compression of the sciatic nerve, L5 nerve root, and I have a video for that. And if your pain is aggravated when you walk, and then the pain is in the back of both thighs, then watch the video of exercise for spinal stenosis. Modalities and lifestyle changes. Occasionally bracing or lumbar supports might be necessary for spondylolisthesis. Um, most of the studies that were conducted for bracing, they were done in children and adolescents with ischemic spondylolisthesis to avoid the progression of the disease. Another thing that is useful is acupuncture, electrostimulation like TENS, and don't forget smoking cessation is very important because smoking causes poor bone healing. I have a video about smoking and pain that you can watch. Weight loss is very important for people with spondylolisthesis. What about sleep? Sleep hygiene is also relevant. Watch my video that I talk about sleep quality and I give many tips on how to improve your sleep efficiency. Activity modification, especially around proper lifting, bending, ergonomics. Avoid prolonged sitting and driving. What about manual therapies? Spinal manipulation, massage are excellent. In terms of interventional pain management, facet joint injections, epidural steroid injections, nerve blocks, and there are many different types of surgery techniques that could be included to fix the spondylolisthesis. Question five, will the spondylolisthesis get worse with time and will I need surgery? Well, in general, a minority of patients, about one third of adults with degenerative spondylolisthesis will progress from a low grade to a high grade spondylolisthesis. Those patients that present initially to the physician with neurological symptoms already will respond less favorably to conservative therapies and will likely need surgical stabilization. So talk to your doctor about regular checkups to monitor the progression of your symptoms, to do a neurological physical exam regularly. And if your doctor, when they examine you and talk to you, if they are concerned about new symptoms or the physical exam that they do on you, they may order an X-ray to check if the spondylolisthesis is progressing or not. So if you like this video, press the thumbs up button here 
And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so then you can be notified when I post new videos. And watch my next video here. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.